Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to this week's Friday on the Turntable. This one is a special edition. I'm not going to focus on one particular album, but the t there's going to be a topic for this week's Friday on the Turntable. And this is one I, I featured in a two-part series on my uh, Life on This Planet blog a few years ago, and it was just a list with some descriptions and stuff, but I figured this, I shoot a Friday in the Turntable feature on it to, uh, so I can get a little bit more discourse on this. And I would love this to develop into uh, VC threads, so uh, if you guys if, take this topic and run with it, and I'd like to see your spin on it, but the topic is the sophomore slump. Now in the music business, there is such a thing that Bands come out strong out of the gate with a debut album and then their second album or the sophomore album always ends up being uh, a uh, commercial or a, um, or a creative flop. But in this case, I am pulling out, so I pulled out 10 albums that where there is no sophomore slump here. These are solid gold, um, great albums. And uh, there's a saying that it takes your life, your whole life to write your first album and only six months to write your second album and that's what uh, the pressures are from your record label from being out on the road you don't have time to write songs etc etc so this defy these albums defy that whole uh, logic and um, so let's just start it off right out right off the bat uh, Jimi Hendrix experiences acts as bold as love now this came out on December 1st 1967 and his first album, Are You Experienced, came out on May 12th, 1967. And when you think about, uh, in this day and age, how long it takes for a band to put out their next album, some bands take, you know, four or five years. Look at that, six and a half months for that masterpiece, Are You Experienced, to be followed by another one, uh, Are, um, Acts As Bold As Love. So six and a half months, we're talking Little Wing, Castles Made Of Sand, If Six Was Nine, just an incredible album. And this is the reissue one that came out a few years ago. Uh, Gateful, you can hear it crack because I probably have never opened it that far before, but just a killer album. So that's Axe as Bold as Love. Just a great second album. Uh, how about this one, Led Zeppelin II. I'm sure a lot of you guys immediately thought of this one. Uh, this is Gatefold. Led Zeppelin II. So their first one, Led Zeppelin I, came out January 12th, 69. October 22nd, 1969, same year, so just 10 months difference. So that first album was followed by, I mean, Ramble On, Thank You, Whole Lot of Love, What Is What Is and Should Never Be, Living Love and Made, I mean, seriously, just a killer follow-up record. Definitely a great sophomore album. Uh, skipping to 1980, Joy Division's Closer, amazing second album. Uh, sadly, this one came out after uh, lead singer Ian Curtis committed suicide, but it was released about a year after their debut, uh, Unknown Pleasure. So this came out on July 18th, 1990, where the first one was uh, June, 5th, June 15th, 79. So I'm sure his death had uh, a little bit of an effect on the delay of the release of it. But, I mean, the eternal um, decades... Um, a means to an end, atrocity exhibition, 24 hours, just just a killer album. This is also the ri the Rhino reissue on this one, which has the cool sleeve, and I won't pull all these out out just because I don't want to take up too much time on this video. But Joy Division's second album, Closer. Oh, here's another great one. Let me uh, turn the page here for my uh, my notes on these dates here. All right, how about Strange Days by The Doors? I mean, their first album, Killer, followed by another insanely excellent album. That's Strange Days. Now, the debut came out on January 4th, 67. This came out September 25th, 1967. So we're looking at about eight months. I mean, I just find that amazing how quickly bands worked back then. And nowadays with computers, uh, Pro Tools, digital recording, you know, there's just infinite amount of tracking you can do back then. You know, they were using four track machines, maybe eight tracks if they were lucky back in, the, in these days. But, you know, primarily four tracks and they worked. And some of these albums were recorded just, just so quickly. But, um, okay, um, People Are Strange, When the Music's Over, Moonlight Drive. Love Me Two Times, Strange Days, Your Lost Little Girl. Just just excellent. Sophomore album. Uh, Lou Reed, after leaving the, Vel after leaving the Velvet Underground, he, he put out his first album on June 19th, in June of 72, and then he followed it up 
six months later with Transformer, produced by Bowie and Mick Ronson. I mean, this definitely, you know, I, you know, was how many times better than his debut album? You know, you got Vicious, Perfect Day, Walk on the Wild Side, Satellite of Love, just killer. So that came out six months after his first one. Uh, here's another one, kind of like the Joy Division story. Um, after, um, well, Graham Parsons, I don't know how many of you are familiar with, I'm sure a lot of you guys are, but Graham Parsons, he had a band called the International Submarine Band, one album, and then he joined the Birds. He was on Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Then he formed his own band with Chris Hillman from the Birds called Flying Burrito Brothers. They did two albums together. Then he left and he did his solo albums. Well, his first one came out in... Um, in January of 1973 and then uh, after he died in September of 73 uh, his second solo album came out in January of 74 so about a year later and I'm sure there were some delays because of his death and uh, figuring out rights and I know the album cover ended up not being what was initially decided upon but uh, excellent album you know of course features Emmylou Harris on, on you know co-vocals but you had you know return of the grievous angel the incredible cover of love hurts um in my hour of darkness hickory wind which is a song that ended up uh that graham parsons wrote that did appear originally on sweetheart of the rodeo but then there's a, a pseudo live version of it on this album that they did in the studio that they made it like it was live and they had people come in and uh uh do some uh vocal uh you know talking in the background to make it sound like it was at a concert and one of the people is uh oh my god what what is his name i can't think of it offhand right now but uh hang on one second why can't i think of this oh my god the guy that did the uh that did the runaways anyways it'll come to me prob oh kim folly kim folly is one of the uh one of the guys that are doing the uh, background noises and uh I think he's the one that yells, Sin City, Graham. But yeah, Graham Parsons' Grievous Angel, another killer sophomore album. Here's another new, here's one that's newer. And uh, I wanted to kind of give a variety of stuff here because I want to I wanna see what you guys can all come up with as well, sophomore albums. But here's one from 2009. And this is, uh, I think this is an excellent album. And I have a picture disc edition of the album. And this is uh, Lily Allen, it's not me, it's not, it's, it's not me, it's you. Uh, just a really clever, catchy, every song is killer on this one. You got the Fear 22, Not Fair, which is this little kind of country song with some pretty dirty lyrics, and it's just um, it, it's just really great. And this came out, now this gives you a comparison between back then in the 60s, 70s, and even the, even the early 80s with the duration of time between albums, but her debut came out in 2006. Her, um, called All Right Still, and this her second album came out in 2009, so there was a three-year gap between that. And she hasn't even put out a new album since this, so we're already going on a four-year gap since this one. But uh, definitely worth checking out if you're unfamiliar with Lily Allen. Um, just uh, this one, I actually prefer this to her first album, so there's another uh, little props for the sophomore album. I got three more for you guys here. Roxy Music's For Your Pleasure. This is the second album. Came out in 1973. Uh, let me give you the exact. So this came out on March 23rd, 1973. Their debut album came out June 16th, 72. So there was a nine month gap uh, between this. And this was the uh, second album and the last one to feature Brian Eno. Brian Ferry was the singer of Roxy Music. And uh, great artwork on this one. Title track, For Your Pleasure on this is great. In Every Dream I'm Heartache, it's a phenomenal song. Um, Do the Strand, there's just lots of great stuff. It's just an uh, excellent album. I have a hard time deciding which is my favorite Roxy album, the first or the second one, because they're both really good. Uh, next one, The Smiths, Meat is Murder. Their second album, which came out, what do we got on this one? February of 85, their debut was February of 84, so we got about a year difference there. That joke isn't funny anymore. The title track, Meet is Murder. Uh, How Soon Is Now appears on the uh, American edition, which is on this one. Well, I Wonder, just a great album. Really interesting artwork on that one as well. So yeah, sophomore album. No sophomore slump here, is it? Meet is Murder from the Smiths. All right, one more, guys. 
couldn't leave this one off. It's just too, too excellent. Recorded in just six days, Black Sabbath's Paranoid. Uh, what can I say about this one? Their debut was September 18th, 1970. Or sorry, this is September 18th, 1970. Their debut was February 13th, 1970. So we have a difference of about seven months there. Like I said, recorded in six days. You got War Pigs, Paranoid, Planet Caravan, Iron Man. I mean, that's side one. How killer is that? Electric Funeral, Hand of Doom, Rat Salad, Fairies Wear Boots. Just, just a great album. Um, I, the first album is the very first one I heard, but uh, I'll show you my copy. This one's on clear vinyl there. But um, yeah, just another excellent example of a great so uh, second album, or as we can say, a sophomore album. So. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. So if you guys got time, go through your record collection, dig deep, show me some examples of some great second albums. So anyways, talk to you guys soon. Bye.